Good day everyone. I am Lance Timothy Seelin, an aspiring MBA student from the Ateneo Graduate School of Business. For today, I will be talking about the new paradigm shift in the world of marketing. Hence, the title of today's presentation is Jumping to the Next Curve, Marketing 4.0 in the Digital Economy. Over the years, we have experienced major shifts in marketing, from Marketing 1.0 which had a more product-driven approach to marketing, to marketing 2.0, a more customer-centric approach, to ultimately a more human-centric approach in marketing 3.0. Now, marketing is all about evolution. Hence, I present to you Marketing 4.0 an approach that combines online and offline interaction between companies and customers. In this curve, digital interaction alone is not sufficient. The offline touch now represents a strong differentiation. And so, Marketing 4.0 should blend style with substance. In an increasingly transparent world, authenticity is now the most valuable asset. Lastly, Marketing 4.0 is about leveraging on machine-to-machine -machine connectivity to improve one's productivity while using human-to-human -human connectivity to strengthen customer engagement. Marketing 4.0 is about jumping to the next curve. The most significant dilemma is caused by the mobile internet. It has actually brought peer-to-peer -peer connectivity and has empowered customers to be smarter and better informed than in the past. However, mobile phones have also hurt relationships. They have actually diverted people's attention away from their current environments. And as the drive toward digital economy intensifies, customers are now longing for the perfect application of technologies that allows them to self-actualize while becoming empathetic at the same time. In order to achieve a balance between the digital and the human, companies and customers alike should ask themselves three questions. First, how can your brand develop a powerful differentiation based on human-to-human -human touch in the digital world? Second, how can your business transition from the traditional four Ps, product, price, place, and promotion, to the dig digital four Cs, by adopting co-creation, taking advantage of currency-like pricing, engaging in communal activation, and driving conversation. Lastly, what are the fundamental changes required in your customer service strategy to embrace collaborative customer care? We then answer these questions with the following. Number one, how can you your brand differentiates itself using human-to-human -human touch through customer community confirmation and brand clarification of character. Number two, how can your business transition from the traditional four Ps to the digital four Cs through customer participation in transparent commercialization? Number three, how do you actually embrace collaborative customer care? It is simply by treating customers as equals through collaboration. We then proceed to our first point. Customer community confirmation is about engaging with your community. Customers are now socially connected with one another in horizontal webs of communities. Communities are the new segments. They are formed by customers within the boundaries that they themselves define and they will reject a company's attempt to force its way into these webs of relationship. Thus, to effectively engage with the community of customers, brands must now seek for permission, what is known as permission marketing, or asking for a customer's consent prior to delivering marketing messages. In traditional marketing, there are two strategies used that by companies back then. The first one is segmentation, or the practice of dividing the market into homogeneous groups based on certain profiles. The next is using targeting, or the practice of selecting one or more segments that a brand is committed to pursue. Both segmentation and targeting 
exemplify the vertical relationship between a brand and its customers, just like the hunter and the prey. In digital marketing, there is now a horizontal relationship between customers and the brand. Given the information that customers now hold, they can easily tell whether a company is telling the truth or not and easily reject them from entering their circle in the first place. And because of this, the second way a company can differentiate itself is to clarify what their character is to their customers. They must now show their authenticity as a brand. Due to the rise of social media, brands can no longer make false and unverifiable promises. A brand must be dynamic enough to behave in certain ways and in certain situations. What should remain consistent, however, are the brand's characters and codes. The character is the brand's authentic reason for being. And when the core of the brand remains true to its roots, the outer imagery can be flexible. Let me give you three samples. Apple is most known for its products such as the Macintosh, the iPod, and the iPhone. But how were they able to accomplish such feats? Simply by not being tied down to only one product, they never considered themselves only as a computer company. Rather, their mantra is, think different which is to always think outside the box in terms of creativity and innovation. The Ritz Carlton mantra is, ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. So whenever someone outside would ask any employee about what they do, this is how they deliver, and it shows. Lastly, we have Nike, one of the most famous athletic sportswear companies in the world. They started out with shoes, but look at them now. It is true that they sold billions still with their shoes, but their products now range to other items like clothes, bags, and so on. Looking at their mantra, they consider Nike the brand that delivers authentic, athletic performance. It is by sticking to what their roots are that these companies have excelled in their respective fields. The second point is about moving away from the four P's to the four C's. And how does one do this? Through customer participation in transparent commercialization. But what does this actually mean? It is by literally knowing what your customer wants. And no, I am not talking about creating surveys, focused discussion groups, and whatnot. I am talking about actually including the customer from the planning stage, stages down to the execution. The first two C's I'd like to talk about are co-creation and currency. Co-creation is a new product development strategy that involves customers early on in the ideation stage. This helps improve the success rate of new product developments. It also allows customers to customize and personalize products and services, thereby creating superior value propositions for them. An example would be beta testing of App Store developers from Google and Apple. The second C is currency. Currency is also about dynamic pricing or setting flexible prices based on market demand and capacity utilization. Companies can optimize profitability by charging different customers differently. Hence, price is now similar to currency, which fluctuates depending on market demand. Examples of such are the hospitality and airline industries, and also companies like Uber and Grab. The next two C's are communal activation and conversation. The biggest disruptor in this, in this digital age has been peer-to-peer -peer distribution. It has provided customers instant and easy access to the products and services not owned by them, but by other customers. In a connected world, customers demand access to products and services instantly, which can only be served with their peers in close proximity. Examples of such are Uber, Airbnb, and Food Panda. 
The last and final C is conversation. Promotion has always been a one-sided affair with companies sending messages to customers as audiences. But because of the proliferation of social media, it has enabled customers to respond to a company's message. It has also allowed customers to converse about these messages with other customers. Examples of such are apps such as Zomato, TripAdvisor, and any other website that has a comment section. The third and final point is about treating customers as equals through collaboration. Equal treatment is about treating any customer as your own, the same way you would treat a family member or a friend. Companies should view their customers as equals. They should demonstrate genuine concern for the customer by listening, responding, and consistently following through on terms dictated by both the company and the customer. Lastly, collaboration is the key to customer care success. In this next sec section, we now take all that was just discussed earlier and apply them to a much more local and personal setting. This is Marketing 4.0, a local application to a healthy food business here in the Philippines. So what is Grit Philippines in the first place? It is a business that was started in 2017 by two high school friends who were passionate about health and fitness in general. They initially sold smoothie bowls, then an up-and-coming trend, food trend in bazaars and events. But apart from selling through, through smoothie bowls, we also use the business as a platform to actually spread our cause and purpose in society. This was our first booth for, from our first bazaar. We were really dull and boring when we first started. But look at the improvement now. We have actually continuously improved our business and craft based on what our customers told us. So we first look at the first question. How did we differentiate our brand in this digital age? We definitely engaged with our respective communities, whether it be the health conscious, the gym junkie, and even the vegan community. We did this by joining events and bazaars that actually advocated the health and fitness lifestyle. We first talked about what our purpose and roles were prior to selling any product to our potential customers. And it is because of this that those people we met in these events also became our friends. The next one, which we actually consider as our biggest differentiator, is about authenticity. Prior to even starting the business, we made it clear between ourselves that we had to be passionate about what we were selling. Hence, it had to be about health. It was this passion that actually fueled our desires to open and run our business. We wanted to be authentic at the very start, and as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to use the business as a channel to spread our cause. On your right are some of our marketing tools that we use to first entice our customers in dropping by our stall. We then told our story, which then struck a longer conversation and a deeper and more meaningful connection with our customer. The second point is about collaborating with our customers on a much more personal level. Business-wise, we originally wanted to offer a fixed menu for our products due to many reasons, such as faster tracking of inventory, easier management of financials, and so on. But along the way, we adjusted based on what the customer wanted. Hence, we shifted our stance to offer make-your-own smoothie bowls given our wide array of toppings. We also customize packages for events, such as launches and talks, depending on what the customer wants. This is an example of a package that we customize for a specific customer. He wanted a smaller sample of our products and we gave them that. Now, as our customer base grew, 
we also decided to expand into delivery, which, when you think about it, it actually proved to be challenging. Since our product should be consumed cold, it then had to arrive at the customer at in the same state we made them. But nonetheless, we were able to pull it off. Lastly, in line with our purpose to spread our cause, we wanted to take advantage of the use of social media such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We then used it as a platform to converse and interact with our old and new customers. The final point is not only about treating our customers as friends, but rather as family. We did this by creating touchstone experiences from the way we greeted them, the way we listened to them, and by also sharing stories. We showed genuine in affection for them, which made our customers more comfortable in dealing with us. In conclusion, marketing 4.0 in the digital economy entails both, both the traditional and digital to coexist together. Traditional marketing plays a major role in building awareness and interest in the early stages. But as the interaction progresses, digital marketing, marketing now rises in importance. Its most important role is to actually drive action and advocacy. So now, we go back to the three reflection questions that were asked at the very start of this presentation. Number one, how can your brand differentiate itself using human-to-human -human touch? Number two, how do you transition from the four P's to the four C's? And lastly, how do you embrace collaborative customer care? By the following. Number one is through customer community confirmation and brand clarification of character. Number two, it's about customer participation in transparent commercialization. And number three, it is about treating customers as our equals. Marketing 4.0 is another huge jump from the previous curve. Thus, companies and customers must now interact or collaborate with one another to survive in this new digital age. Again, this is Lance Timothy Lim speaking, and I hope you learned something new today.